Hey guys, I'm going to teach you how to uh, dig a test pit when you're out for a tour. You want to know what's going on under the surface of the snow. And I think a bigger thing that few people talk about is why we dig pits. And so I don't always dig a pit when I go out and ride, but I do when I have something that I'm looking for specifically. So a few things to start when we're digging our snow pits. We want the pit location to be representative of what we're trying to ski or ride. Um, we want it to be uh, in a safe location so we're not going to get avalanche while we're digging the pit and we want it to be considerate. We don't want it in the middle of a sweet ski run. I like to dig mine a little wider than normal so I go like 140 centimeters and that gives me room to mess up if I mess up or uh, if I need some extra tests in there I can do that. So if I'm digging a snow pit, typically I'm doing a compression test and an extended column test. As a standard, that's really what I do 90% of the time. If my ECT propagates and I need more information, then I can do what's called a propagation saw test, but I'm not doing that nearly as much as I'm doing a compression test or an extended column test. So I've dug my pit and uh, what I want to do is locate the layers and see the different hardness so we know if we have a slab, weak layer, um, and a bed surface, which is our recipe for an avalanche. So I'll put the probe into the pit, and right now we can hit the ground, so I have it in the dirt, and then 60 centimeters is the bottom of our pit here. And then I'm just going to run the card through and wait for a density change. And when I hit that density change, I'm just going to make a little line in the snow corresponding to the centimeters on the probe. And I'm just going to keep working down. And then if I'm documenting this pit, which I like to do, um, I'm basically going to start at the bottom and each layer I'm going to write in my notebook uh, where it lives and then skip a line and do the next layer. And then I'll come back through and do the hardness either fist hard to knife hard in between those lines. So once I've got the layers ID'd and documented, you can see here I've got each layer and then I skip a line where I'm going to put the hardness for each layer. So once I have the layers um, documented by height of snow, then I'm going to go through and do my hardness test. So And then when I get results in my compression test or extended column test, I can relate them to which layers I found here. And if there's any problematic layers, then we can track them through the rest of the season and make sure they heal up and go away so we can shred more. So for our compression test, we want a column that's 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters. Um, so we can mark that out in the snow. Let me give myself a little room here. I'm always feeling for layers as I cut. Maybe something I didn't notice when I was shoveling. So we got 30. And then we can do a little pie wedge technique to get rid of the side here. So once we've done our pie wedge to get our hand back here, we can isolate the back of the column.
And then once that column's isolated, then we can do our tap test. So, put our shovel on there. We're gonna go 10 from the wrist, 10 from the elbow, and then 10 from the shoulder. And we're looking for any failures within the snowpack. So I got a little collapse right here. And we'll pull off the block. And there you go. You can see our shear quality there. And so, usually with the compression test, if I get a failure like that, it really just is highlighting something that I should be paying attention to for other tests. So, sometimes you can look at the uh, grain forms, see if anything's going on weird, and then we can finish up the test. After I do my compression test, I'm going to move on to an extended column test. And our extended column test is basically a compression test, but three times the size. So instead of 30 centimeters long, it's going to be 90 centimeters long. We can use our probe to measure out 90 centimeters. I like to carry a little length of paracord with a bunch of knots in it, and these knots help to cut the snow to isolate the column. So I'm going to pass this around here, and then we're just going to cut down through the snow path here. Then once it's fully isolated, we're going to do the same with the shovel. 10 easy taps from the wrist, 10 taps from the elbow, and then 10 taps from the shoulder. So we'll take our probe out. If you're ever not sure on which side to do your tap test, right or left, we always want to do worst case scenario. So if the pit is shallower on one side than the other, we're gonna pick the shallow side. So in this pit, left side shallower, we'll do this side. So we got a little break here, no propagation though, and then we'll do 10 more. So our ECT gave us no propagation, which is a good sign, but we don't want to interpret, it, interpret that as a green light for all terrain. It's just, a, it's just telling us that in this exact location, in this exact pit, our snow is not propagating. 